Hello there, person! <laughs> Victory! Success! 60 frames per second, even on older GPUs. Let's see how fast this runs now that I'm recording a video. Huh. See, we're gonna get 60 frames per second all the time on this laptop because this is a really fast GPU. However, on, I have an old laptop that is, uh, dang, it's from 2013. That's almost, that's like eight years old. Really, really old. It's like the oldest laptop you can possibly have that's a Mac uh, that still can run um, the latest OS. It's like one of the very first, uh, is it Intel GPUs? I don't know. Anyways, um, but the point is, I got it running at 60 frames per second, even on those older, older uh, GPUs and here and also was able to do some aesthetic improvements as well you can see there's sort of a little bit more dithering going on in the background mm -hmm. there's a little bit more of a moodiness going on in general uh, darker at the edges and there's a little bit more desaturation going on in the edges and it just kind of all blends into a much more pleasing aesthetic uh, so let's take a look at the art behind all this first um, Let's look at the like this document here. It's, I went through a, a tons of iterations of um, getting this all to look just right. Uh, so let's go all the way back to let's just show what layer zero used to look like. This is what it looked like before. So you can see that check, check out this these background sections right here. These are really uniform in their. Um, their hue, their value, and their saturation. It's just sort of we got this blah going on with these walls right here. We all we also have a, a bit too much brightness going on in these in these lower sections of these walls here. And uh, and we also have check out this, we we have very little text or dithering going on, which I'm really stoked about the dithering. It just looks so cool, right? So I wanted to wanted to bring that out. I've got all this technology to, to apply dithering to the shaders. Why not why not make it work so um oh i'm gonna need to do all these control z's uh so moving along i went through just iteration after iteration just trying to basically what i was doing was trying to get it to look good while still running fast so this is eventually i got it to look like this and you can tell there's a lot more moodiness going on look at these look at these hues right here the difference between these hues here in the wall Right before we had almost the exact same color here, but now we've got a real, di real difference between the top of the wall and the side of the wall. We've also got a really nice, a better, better uh, value going on for these uh, these walls. We still don't have the nice dithering going on though. Um, so, what's kind of funny is this is where I got it to run at 60 frames per second, and it's just all basically shader work. Um, and I can take a look at show you some code really quick um, with the with the Getting it to run at 60 frames per second, it's basically just running way less shaders. I used to have a shader running on the draw node and on the FBO, the frame buffer objects, and also on gosh, what was it? The other thing? Oh, it was the it was the FB. It was a couple. There's actually four different FBOs. And there was one running on uh, one of the original FBOs, and then again on another FBO. So that basically that's running a shader for every single pixel of the entire screen, once and then again. And so that just making those combining those into one shader really improved the performance. But the the real killer was um, these these uh, array lookups I was doing here in, in shader create dither texture. Um, this is the improved version. Basically, uh, check it out. Here at the top, we have this Bayer 8x8 uh, dithering array. Basically, this is a really nice looking array of values that can create a really nice dith dithering. And it's just called the Bayer. You can look that up. You know, the, you can look up Bayer dithering and see how to create this yourself. Uh, but basically, uh, Instead of doing an array lookup, so I was passing all 64 of those values to every shader and then looking them up based on an integer with some mods and some floors and some y times widths, 
all that kind of stuff. And then it's just, it was amazingly more performant, way better performance when you create a texture and do a texture lookup. Um, just incredibly more faster. So back to back to the actual art of this all. So, um, so after getting it to run at 60 frames per second, I went through layer after layer going, because I, I did this and then forgot how I did it. I have no, I still to this to this moment, I have no idea how I got this look. This is like really cool. And then you start adding in these other layers and it's like, whoa, we lost it. We totally lost it. Okay, we're back. We totally lost it, right? So um, all these layers are just like, we lost it. Where did it go? How, how the hell did I do that? Right, I'm just going through, this is layer, 16 right here look at where we're at layer 31 32 and all of these are just different different attempts finally i've got something which is pretty close and i think is a little bit better in ways and here's why um here's actually the final version right here um we've still got really nice difference between the tones of in the walls we've got, still got that really nice tone on the, the down here uh however We've got a little bit of desaturation going on on the edges of the screen, and that's something I had written into the one of the original uh, shaders, and I was I found it to be very pleasing to my eye aesthetically to have the edges of the screen desaturated a bit. It really helps to focus the eye on the center of the screen. So while this one right here looks pretty dope, it's very nice and moody. We've still got a ton of saturation in the edges, which can kind of tire the eye a little bit, in, in my opinion. So this one has uh, less of that, less of that saturation going on on the edges, and then we've also got some real improvements to the dithering. Check out how awesome that dithering looks right there, compared to this before this dope one that I've, I stumbled across. Still didn't have these awesome dithering. So now we've got boom! Look at this. Look at how cool that dithering looks. And that was just playing around with different values in the dithering lookup. Uh, this it takes a step into the dithering uh, shader, dithering texture, and it, it is a certain width to its step. So it could be like, ah, I'm gonna take a step at one, or I'm gonna take a step at 0 0.5, or maybe 0 0.25. And this is like a blending of two of them. This is 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 mixed together, and you can see the day, the, the Bayer pattern. Why am I not getting that tool? Oh well. Here, we'll zoom in this way. I'm trying to zoom in, show you, show you the dithering pattern here. This is just uh, quintessentially Bayer right here. Really nice pattern. I love that pattern. So uh, that's kind of the, the really the core of what's awesome about this new improvement here in, in Wraithbinder. 60 frames per second we've got some aesthetic improvements as well and there's more things i did this week uh check out this this is pretty cool you can now bind your controls Let's see if this works here you can first of all you can reset all your keys so if you want to reset to the defaults you can do that you can reset to wasd so if you want to use your wasd keys or you can reset to vim What's your fear of a Vim user like me? Uh, this is kind of a, probably not many people will, will recognize this, but the people that do will be like, hell yes. Reset to Vim keys. Um, and then, so this has been proved here. We've got these map, you can map your controls a lot better. There's a weird flickering issue going on in the background. Just ignore that for now. Um, direction, so we've got new artwork for all the di for the directions. Look at those, these nice little uh, left stick uh, icons, images, and stuff like that, and we can rebind these a, a lot more, uh, more better now. So I went through the process. It took basically a whole day of just trying to rebind all these controls correctly, and now we've got we can re we can rebind anything. Let's see, check this out. I could even rebind my controls so that up is down and down is is. I'm gonna go down for up. And it's messing me up totally. Whoops, I pressed X is now down. 
Okay, I'm just totally confused now. I don't even know what I did. I'm pressing up now and I'm going down on this menu. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I don't like it. Oh, we can't even cancel because I remapped X. Oh, hey, I just found another bug. It did not reset the bindings after I canceled that. Well, let's, let's switch back to the keyboard for a second. We'll add this to the to-do list. Solve issue where canceling bindings doesn't restore bindings. There. So I'll fix it. I'll get that fixed. Look how look how long my list is. This is crazy. This is super crazy. It stresses me out even looking at it. Let's not look at this anymore. All right. Um, what else? Oh, there's also some real improvements to the Windows version. I've spent a lot of time this week uh, here in my Windows um, Fusion, uh, my, my uh, what do you call these, virtual machine. I'm in, this, I'm in this virtual machine on Windows, making edits, making sure this all works right. Um, some big improvements there. Uh, basically, it can load over the network now like ridiculously faster. There was this real huge bottleneck in um, in Cocos 2D's file system lookup codes, so basically it would, uh, um, it's really crazy, it's so slow to look up files over the network because it's, for every single file you ever look up, it's, it's, Cocos 2D is doing this really inefficient thing where it's checking if a file exists, uh, even when you're just expanding a, a file name, like if you want to, if you're looking for, um, red dot text or or my my star image dot ping and you you you're looking up that file name and it wants to translate that into assets slash textures slash my star ping it still does this file lookups to see if it, the file exists and over the network that's a crazy slow thing so what i did is i made sure every single file asset exists call can have an asset type so it can be, my own code can be very smart about whether it even calls Kogo City's asset exists or not. It can look this up like this. Eventually, uh, the asset exists can co come back to this function here called file exists, which goes ahead and determines the exact directory for every asset type. So you pass in the asset type around here and you can get way more efficient. You can get the exact path that you need you can know what that is and then see if that file exists without even calling Cocos 2D and it's super slow code. We can just call stat and see if a file exists. So that's a huge improvement to the loading performance on Windows over a network. Um, and I, I haven't tried this on, on Mac over a network, but I'm sure it'd be a lot faster there too. So that's that's a big thing. A couple more things. Uh, there's this, this weird issue on Windows that I fixed. This is kind of like some more housekeeping stuff, but uh, on Windows, there was this issue where it would initialize this vector. This is an incredibly important little vector right here. C styles empty. Um, without this working, every sing almost every single one of the models in the game didn't load. So the game looked really blank. It looked like everything was missing. Like what the heck happened to the world? It's gone. There was only ground t ground and pillars. Everything else was gone. No guardians, no menders, no walls. Everything was missing. And because of this, this simple little thing right here, you would think that this would initialize a standard standard initializer list of car elements, character elements, uh, with just one element and the first element being zero. Right? That's what I think that means right there. Uh, you could also do it this way. And um, I think that's actually the the correct way to do that uh, to use standard initializer list. But on Windows, Microsoft Visual C++, this translates into just this const int. There's nothing I could get do to get around this to somehow get that to not translate into just a single integer. I even tried something like this where I had uh, a standard initializer list of zero and then one. Still turned into a constant it's basically I just basically just got rid of the uh, this um, constructor for vector 
and no, I I just use this other alternate constructor for vector here, where you're initializing one element with zero, and that correctly initializes this styles empty, and then causes all those missing objects to no longer be missing, and everything looks good again. So that was a big bug fix for Windows. Um, so Windows version's nice and tight, everything's cool. We got this nice cool aesthetic going on and everything's running at 60 frames per second right now. Really feeling good, victorious, successful, feeling great. So thanks for watching this video, person. We'll catch you on the next one.